Thank you so much for tuning into my show. William Wallace for America with me today is somebody that is going to answer the question, why do people vote a certain way? You're always amazed as I am. I'm sure you are because I get asked a lot of these questions from people when I see them out in public and at events like, well, why do, why don't Christians vote? They're the largest voting bloc in America that doesn't vote. Or why do the Jewish people vote with Democrat issues, knowing that the Jewish people in general don't like Jewish people? Or is that just the narrative from the right? Or is that the truth of what's going on that's being covered up by narratives on the left? I don't know, but I do know somebody that has that question. And we're about to have a conversation with her. Daniela Bloom, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. I really appreciate you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Well, I was excited, you know, when I saw uh, saw that that you are with an organization called Jexit, which we'll talk about that in a second. And then I got even more excited when I realized that you're going to answer the question, why do Jewish people vote Democrat when the Democratic Party is notoriously against the Jewish people? Your yes. answer to that in general is, and we're going to go into detail with it, but let's get that right off the bat. And then I'm going to have you have you explain some other things. But during the show, we're going to talk about your book, your podcast, and some things that you've done in the past. It's going to back up all your information. Wonderful. Let's do it. So, so what is the reason why the Jewish people tend to vote Democrat when the Democrat Party is generally against the Jewish people? Yes, it would seem that way today. Uh, I am a true Jexeter. I voted for Obama not once, but twice. uh, And I'm doing all my atonement now. Uh, So I still speak liberal and understand the liberal mentality. Uh, Historically, Jews align themselves with other minorities of America. Um, Both the black community and Jewish community uh, experienced a lot of racism and segregation together. So historically, you know, Jews founded the AACP and and Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel walked with Martin Luther King uh, because not it was up until the mid 40s when Jews and Christian uh, Jews in the the black community were not even allowed to like live in certain neighborhoods. I'm from Los Angeles. So like in Beverly Hills, for example, they couldn't join certain country clubs. So uh, historically, we aligned with the underdog. And, uh, and and we all came to America because we knew what real communism and when you couldn't practice your religion freely, when you didn't have the inherent freedoms that America's constitution was founded on to take advantage of. Uh, unfortunately, the far left has hijacked the classic liberal party that uh, traditionally Jews would support. And they've radicalized the party and they've also succeeded in um, Trump derangement syndrome still on many Jews who can't critically think. Uh, I talk with liberal Jews every day. And although a lot of them have woken up since October 7th, when they look to the left, look to the right, realize no one was putting a blue checkbox in their Instagram feed. It's the way the Jews had put the liberal Jews had put their boxes their black boxes for BLM, for example, the silence was deafening to them, especially after they saw what was happening on college campuses. When mm. you see progressive socialists standing with Islamic fundamentalists, when genocide <laughs> has to be put in the right context, this certainly did wake up a lot of Jews. Um, and we see in the numbers, we see that traditionally Democrats voted 80-20. Uh, 80, uh, the Jews voted 80% Democrat, 20% Republican. That number has come down to 60-40. But Jews really only make 2% of the voting uh, up in this election. It's really our allies today, our Christian allies who unapologetically stand for Israel, for Judeo-Christian values, that we need their voice more than ever. So you're so now that that when it went from 80% to 60%, that's a huge drop it is. in the voting block. I mean, that 20% could make a really big difference in this next election. So you're telling me that from what, what I can summarize, but that the reason that, that Jews have you know, historically have voted for Democrat is because or voted Democrat rather is because way back, we go back in the way back machine before the Democrats 
actually more uh, before the Democratic Party became in, infiltrated with a leftist mentality. The Jews were become or a part of the Democrat Party because that's back when it was, I guess, more for the little people. We'll it was say. more the Kennedy Party. The, you know, yeah. the, the true liberal values are for freedom of speech, for freedom of religion, for a diversity of opinion. Um, not the party of war. It's like uh, we've had a party switch. Uh, in fact, the Trump We the People Party has more liberal values today than today's Democrat Party does. And what's interesting is, you know, we, we talk to some people that say, well, my dad voted Democrat all his life. My grandmother voted Democrat. And they're really, their values were more conservative in nature and more, and more anti left wing ideology or communist type of ideologies. And people say, well, why did they vote Democrat? Well, because, you know, the, the Democrat Party at one time, you know, had that, you know, that, uh, I guess, tradition of being for the little person. And also, you know, they just, that's, you know, they did what their parents did, you know, kind of thing. But now it's more in our face. Is that why Jewish people are waking up? Or do you think that it's something different? Yeah, I mean, um, we all know about white supremacy coming from the far right, but really we're seeing the rise of anti-Semitism coming from the far left. Um, the rise of hate crimes that uh, correlate with people who support BLM, people who support Antifa, people who uh, in the name of Islamic phobia stand with terrorists uh, and uh, rationalize Jew hate in rallies. This is coming from the left. So, uh, you know, that's the, that's the one thing both extreme sides of the party have in common is, uh, is, is anti, is, is, is Jew hatred, right? So, you know, the, the, the white supremacists say that the Jews are socialists, the left, uh, the, the far left say the Jews are capitalists. You know, you can project any and scapegoat any, uh, label onto the Jews because, the Jews are an easy target. They don't fit the mold of a traditional minority. They don't identify as an oppressed people. They are forward thinking. They are not empowered victims. We're seeing what's happening right now in Israel. They have a good um, work. I think they're self-starters, so they're self-sustaining. Value, yeah. value education, value contribution. You know, time and time again, the Jews have had to start all over with literally the clothes off their backs. They've had to leave their wealth, leave their fortune, leave their clothes, leave their communities behind to relocate and they do and they flourish and they, they, they work with the limitations that they were given. For example, the reason why Hollywood was created was because Jews were not allowed to be doctors and lawyers. Um, they, they could only work with the limitations that they were given. So instead of complaining and playing victim, they created, they created a new industry. And um, I just want to make a disclaimer. Jews do not control Hollywood. There's a many different people who are in Hollywood now who are in charge. Right. Um, but, you know, it's like Jews are being um, criticized for doing well. But it's literally been a matter of survival that Jews have had to find themselves in positions of influence and authority because they've seen time and time again their people, you know, being threatened to be uh, uh, extinguished. And. And, and they want to say in the only Jewish state in the world that exists, thank God that they do have that influence and in, say, because Israel does have a right to exist and, and continues to make the entire world um, a better place. No one can go a day in their life without some sort of innovation or medical discovery, entertainment, uh, drip irrigation that has come specifically from Israel or the Jews. Uh, Jews fundamentally believe in tikkun olam to repair the world. So just let the Jews just live in peace to make everyone's life better. And what's interesting, is you, you made you made a great point. Without Israel being occupied by the Jewish people, who have always lived on that land forever, then we would have a Middle East that was rising in power and going to be uh, you know without check without any checks and balances at all, because there'd be nobody over there to point out what's going on. That's just one thing. I want to go backwards a minute because you said something in the beginning when you said, yeah, you voted for Obama and you used to be, uh, used to be more, and you speak the liberal, uh, the liberal language. 
And I heard that, I've heard that several times since you've been talking, if something will pop out, like when you talk about the rights wing supremacist, you know, and that's something you usually hear from somebody on the left. But then because you are more awake and aware of what's going on politically and how the Jewish people are being divvied up and divided up and the narratives that are being used to manipulate others based on Jewish people, you are also able to note that, hey, where I came from on the left is also another form of supremacy that believes in violence and are more anti-Israel than anybody. And how it also it puts a highlight on the fact that I like to say is we are all more alike in a group, all more alike than we realize. 80% of us are right here in the middle, but we're being divided up by a far right and a far left, which is what's being used to get their agendas through, which one is anti-Israel. So let's talk about Jexit for a second. Sure. You, you're, 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 you're the ambassador for Jexit. Did you start Jexit? And no. then what? I, it was not, I didn't start Jexit. Um, it was started in Florida um, by Michelle Terrace. And Siggy Flicker is the official spokesman. She was the former Real Housewives, uh, Real Housewife of New Jersey. And uh, I'm here on the West Coast. So by me joining the team, we made it national. Uh, so from coast to coast, we are waking Jews up and giving them a home. But it's really also aligning with our Christian community. We believe make America Judeo-Christian again. I love it. I absolutely love it. So, you know, a lot of people like to say how the Constitution is a Christian value document, you know, how the founding fathers were Christian, how America's founding was Christian. And, and, but then I also hear a smaller percentage of people talk about the Judeo Christian values that started America. Can you point to anything in particular that kind of emphasizes or underlines why that is that Judeo Christian Judeo part of it has so much, had so much emphasis on the creation of America and America's status? Right. Well, I mean, it says very clearly in God we trust and 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 the founders of America were were Christian and they got their values from the 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 Old Testament and and which is the Torah and the idea that you're you're bringing inherent freedoms back to the individual where we have um, a right to express ourselves, a right to protect ourselves, a right to self-actualize. Um, these are inherent freedoms that God has given us. And so to create a constitution that does not allow a government to infringe upon these God-given freedoms has been the beacon of light for the West. And we've seen many European countries following suit. I absolutely love this. So I, you know, I did a, um, I, I've done a, so a bunch of shows where I've referred to how freedom runs in our DNA, how, you know, how there's proof that freedom runs in our DNA. And you can, we can point back to, you know, the, the, the uh, 12 pillars of Rome, or actually some people call it the 12 tables of Rome, you know, the Magna Carta, we can point to our constitution, but we can also point to, I think the 10 commandments, because while that is a, you know, like you said, a Jewish time frame, I believe that the 10 commandments aren't there, even though we know them as a set of laws, I also like to say that they also reflect our freedoms in, in our in our world. And when we talk about Judeo-Christian values, I think that also ties into that. What do you think about that? Absolutely. Um, Dennis Prager, I'm sure you know, is, is he happens to be a good friend of mine. And he says all the time that if, if people follow the Den Commandments, we wouldn't need to defund the police. And it's such a, a foundational core of our values that many of us have have forgotten it's so basic um even honoring your mother and father we see this playing out with children child-centered homes where the children run the show uh we are in a generation where children especially have been spoiled by freedoms and parents who passively appease them um we've lost our way a little bit uh in this country and to to be reminded of the Ten Commandments, and this was part of the my children's book that I incorporated in, it's so vital. And, and especially one of them, does it does not say, for example, in the Ten Commandments, to not kill. It actually says, thou shall not 
murder. That's a huge distinction because even in the Bible, there is a time and a place to defend yourself. In fact, you are you are commanded to defend yourself with this Hebrew right. concept of uh, rodef. That if you warn your perpetrator several times, you know, don't kill me. If you kill me, I'm going to kill you. And they keep advancing. You are obligated to then take care of them for the sake of your family. Do you do you know? Did, then you know what happened to me about three months ago, right? What's that? No. My wife and I were carjacked at gunpoint. Oh my gosh. And uh and 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 the carjacker tried to kill my wife. At which time I drew my 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 gun and uh and we and he and I got into a shootout. Wow. And and so he is uh now in jail. Thank um you. and and uh and, and I'm making a long story very short, but I I'm, I'm not trying to bring attention to me while, uh, from our interview. I'm trying to use what you're to, to put an exclamation point on what you're saying, basically, which is, you know, people, people have asked me, they said, well, William, do you think you need therapy? Because, you know, you got to be, you know, completely in shock by what happened, you know, and, oh, you know, does it bother you? And I said, no, not at all. God gave me the right to defend myself. He gave me the right to defend my family. And I stopped him from killing my wife and I stopped him from killing me. And I, and the actions that, of that night but of what, of me doing that got him in jail. And so I yeah. don't feel one bit bad about it at all. I feel empowered because I believe in our God given right to defend ourselves and our family. So I'm just trying to put a little exclamation point to your statement, which I completely agree with. You're absolutely right. Where did that happen? If you don't mind me asking, in Louisiana, in a, in a little town, 10, 10 minutes south of mm -hmm. a town called Alexandria, Louisiana. It's a, it's a little small town yeah. called like Count Louisiana. They like to pronounce it there. Little small town, yeah. and uh, stopped to go for a bathroom break at ten thirty at night, and uh, some guy needed our car to get away. We we were the Thank fifth. God. Thank God we were, you the, were out okay. We were the fifth victims of the night. Wow. He shot well, it's, it's not so, uh, it's, it's craziness in here in Los Angeles. Uh, you have, um, soft on crime DAs giving, um, the criminals way more power than, uh, than the, uh, than the, than the, than the victims of the crime. And, uh, you know, when you're allowed to sh legally shoplift after up to a thousand dollars in, um, goods <laughs> that you store unbelievable when, when you are uh when you can be sued by the burglar if you shoot them in your own house because they broke in uh times are crazy times sure are really, really crazy <laughs> so back back to jexit so what yeah. so so let's talk about uh what we i guess common sense will tell us why jexit got formed but more of her of her mission to start jexit and why what was the what was the catalyst and then what is the mission, even though some of this is common sense, by asking the question, sometimes I get unique pieces of information, which I'll turn to you. Yeah, well, Jexit and similar, there's also the Blexit movement with, with Black people leaving the Democrat Party, mm -hmm. the Lexit movement, Latinos leaving the uh, Democrat Party. Um, I think any minority today who goes against the grain of their parties, because minorities do traditionally tend to vote Democrat. Um, they're going against the grain and they're getting a lot of heat from their own people. I remember the day that I came out as a Trump supporter um, to my liberal world uh, on <laughs> Facebook, on social media. And we don't forget those days. And no. I got so much wrath from none other than my Jewish liberal friends. How could you support a Nazi? He's an anti-Semite. And it's crazy to me because there's no doubt that President Trump has been the absolute best president for the Jews. He moved the embassy to Jerusalem. Do they not? Do they not yeah. remember that Joe Biden was the creator of the most discriminatory law in the in the nineties? Are they, you know are they not aware yeah. that Joe Biden has They're made the aware. most racist comments about yeah. black people? They're not. They they we are living in parallel universes. Uh, their feeds are filled with Trump derangement syndrome stories, putting him as a convict, uh, a rapist, a sexist, anyist, right? Xenophobic, right. you know, um, 
they don't uh, see what we see. Uh, it's clear as day, the hypocrisy of, of the Biden administration, the Kamala Harris administration, and, and how we got into this mess. I mean, Trump stopped the Iran deal. He put sanctions on Iran. When you put sanctions on a country, they don't have money to fund terrorism. One of the first things Biden did was lift sanctions of Iran, allowing them to trade oil with China. And all of a sudden, Hamas and Hezbollah have all this money to fund terrorism. Why you would do that to a, a government that openly says death to America, death to Israel. And by the way, the Iranian people are very pro-America and pro-Israel. They would love an end to their terrorist regime. So this is nothing against the Iranian people. We actually have very similar values. Um, but we can all recognize that Islamic fundamentalism hurts everyone. And we can say that with, you know, unapologetically, whether or not the left wants to call us, you know, Islamophobic to derail the conversation again. Right. Yeah, there was a, there was a time when Iran was was a free country and women had rights there. But let's jump let's jump to now. What do you know about what's happening since October 7th? Because you, from what I understand, October 7th is the reason or like was the catalyst moment for the yeah. creation of Jexit. You know, what can you talk about in, in a timeline form that's happened since then that you're aware of? Things are going on in the Middle East and tying that into what Jexit is trying yeah. to do to make Jewish people aware of what's happening. Right. Um, the stakes have never been higher for this election. And uh, say what you want about Trump, but you cannot ignore the facts. Under Trump, we had no new wars. Under Trump, there was no terrorist attacks on Israel. Under Trump, we didn't have a rise of anti-Semitism. Under Trump, we didn't have open borders that have allowed terrorist cells to be working in our country right now. And so what I what my, my, I and my JEGSA team continues to, to, to preach is, okay, you don't like Trump. He's flawed. So was King David. Vote for his ticket. Vote for Elon Musk, Tulsi Gabbard, RFK, all former Democrats who absolutely know what's at stake. And by the way, they're all pro-Israel. They're all right. pro-Judeo-Christian values. They're all pro-inherent freedoms. They all um, have very extensive knowledge on foreign policy. And there's a reason why they left the Democrat Party. And again, we've seen the difference. We've seen four years under a Biden-Harris administration, and we've seen four years under Trump. Granted, the last year of COVID, everyone was uh, in a different um, unknown territory. But, uh, you know, for, for Jews and for Christians, the, the choice is clear. And so how I'm spending a lot of my days and a lot of the members on my team are, is conveying to the Christian community that we need your voices more than ever. This is not the time to sit home. There were 7 million Christians who sat home in sw swing states during the 2020 election. We have to come out so strongly, so unapologetically. We have to stand where the light shines that there is no chance for election interference and fraud. And uh, Jesus, uh, Charlie Cook, I, he quoted Jesus. Jesus never said to be nice. He said to be compassionate, but we have to stand up for what is right and what is always worth standing for. And these are our Judeo-Christian values. I love I love this. So what with, with, with things are escalating in the Middle East right now. And and I and I brought you on as an expert for of Jexit and and the and what's going on with you know the Jewish people and, and this next election and how that blends in with the movement of Jexit. But if you, I, I mean, I know you're very aware of what's going on in the Middle East. They're, they're sending, there's American troops that are going, I, I say that in a, in a way that they've, they said there's, they're going to escalate and, and send some troops over there. And, and usually that means something more, uh, how should I say, more escalating than what it, I think it actually is. But either way, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a move. It's a chess piece that's being moved. There's and we're watching now. Iran more th he, things heat up with Iran. I just saw a news story that um, that that uh, Israel is going to start sending in targeted uh, land missions over there in into Iran. What do you see is happening in the next couple of months? And also note today's October first. There's always that October surprise during election 
uh, election time. What do you see in the next you know few weeks happening over there in the Middle East? I'm, I'd love to answer that question. I just want to make it clear. In no way in time has Israel ever, ever asked for boots on the ground from U.S. troops. U.S. Ha- the, Israel has an, a phenomenal army. Um, minimally, they ask for uh, support diplomatically and that Israel is a true ally to America. Uh, Israel is given aid, but it is a fraction of what the the U.S. has given Ukraine, and it's a complete turn on investment. It's not money that's just given to Israel. It's money that Israel then turns around and invests into American military um, and infrastructure. And and the U.S. gains by Israel, Israel giving uh, state of the art, cutting edge military defense technology to America like the Iron Dome. And we've seen what they were capable of. In, uh, in Hezbollah, taking off every single head of command, they've destroyed the operation completely. And don't think for a second they don't, they're not gonna know how to do the same in Iran. I think, again, this was not a war that Israel asked to be a part of. In fact, Israel is, is fighting America's war uh, because again, when you embolden a country with terrorism, they're not just after Israel. This is an Islamic caliphate. They are after Jews and Christians. They've said openly, Israel is the little Satan. America is the big Satan. And we already see what's happened in Europe and UK as a result of this. Um, being nice and opening borders does not help thy neighbor. Right, because, exactly. You know, you're, right, you're throwing, exactly. Yeah, you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So right now, yeah, I think uh, we are at a precipice of, of a of a very delicate time. Uh, literally every hour, uh, something else can uh, come up to change the dynamic. But at this time, I think Israel is really, really sick of the double messages and the pandering of the Biden administration saying that Israel has a right to exist, but then telling it to use diplomacy, diplomacy, and we'll make an embargo. No. Let Israel do what Israel needs to do, okay? They have a right to protect their citizens. It's a right. tiny country, the size of Delaware. Let them do what they need to do. We are Wait, tired isn't of that, Isn't that where Joe Biden's from? De- exactly. <laughs> ironically. And, um, you know, I, Israel did not want to be in this position, but now that it's in its position, it has a right to defend itself like Absolutely. any other country would. And uh, if Iran does get involved, then unfortunately, the U.S. and the U.K. will probably have to be involved in some capacity as well, because they have to be accountable to this. This so support, mess supporting, Israel, supporting Israel in this yeah. case fights yeah. America's war that less war that, that that America has to fight if they're taking care of it. That's right. Earlier, earlier, you mentioned that you uh, that you have a children's book. I'm switching topics a little bit, you know, <laughs> because I want to make sure I get I, I, I get that in um, because we we can prognosticate and hypothesize about what's happening in in Israel from this point. But I think everybody has the gist of it. You know, we know things are escalating. We know, you know, we're, I, I think I, I, I'm concerned with the October surprise is. I agree that we have a lot of terrorist cells here. In, in America that are from the Middle East and we got this going on. And, um, you know, I, I guess the best we can say is let's just pray to God that anything that the left has planned to do to upset an election can be stopped by God himself or, you know, not used in their favor, if we'll say it that way and, uh, and go yes. from there. Yes. Well, we've already seen God's presence um, when he turned Trump's head one inch that saved him from an assassination. Uh, Again, I think Israel has never received more missile attacks than today. But because of the Iron Dome, there have been just, I think, a handful of casualties. If that, I haven't seen confirmed reports. I've seen unconfirmed reports. Um, Listen, don't mess with the Jews. That's it. Leave the Jews alone. <laughs> Leave the Jews alone and you will be left alone. It's really that simple. And, um, you know, and it's the Christians who remind me that those who bless Israel are blessed. And uh, again, you know, what, what, what are Jews asking? Just to live in peace? 
just right. to live in coexistence. The, the, the Palestinians don't want peace and coexistence. They don't want that. They're not chanting. Wait, wait, that, which, is another narr- which is another narrative that has been used to yeah. make uh, Jewish people vote Democrat when they talk about how Israel is is running over the Palestinians. When the, you know when the fact is Hezbollah and the terrorist groups are putting civilians in danger, and 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 are, are hiding themselves, oh, yeah. you know, within the civilians. But let's talk about some happy news. Okay. You have a children's book, and, okay. and 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 this is so. How does somebody with all of this information on, you know, Israel having the right right to protect itself and what's going on with war and checks it, and all of a sudden you got this little happy place, this little book that you wrote. What's that about? So it's a it's a it's a it's a wonderful story. So this is the book. This is my newest. I have um, a best selling upside down. Series, oh, it's upside down. <laughs> I have a best selling series called Under the Tree, and this is um, most of the books are are children's picture books that embody a, a, a standalone Judeo Christian value. But this one in particular was written for an older child and adult. It's kind of like The Little Prince, where it's a fable. And let me tell you a little bit about this special story. I started this fable eight years ago when I was still a liberal. And it was about a boy who hated the world that um, that he was in. And he just thought that he could find a better world out there somewhere. So he leaves his world. And with the help of the, of the mystical all-knowing tree, which in my head is played by Morgan Freeman, uh, they go on an adventure. And the boy f- goes first to the land of me right? Which is embodying hedonism and, and all about the self and individual. And things happen in that world where he realizes, wait, this is not the ideal world, right? Because when you, when it's all about you, there's no checks and balances. There's no privacy because everyone right. has the same rules, right? So then he goes to the land of we, right? I like this, right? Socialism, communism, but it's quiet and it's predictable, and and he's feeling great because he's contributing and he's he's part of a team. But then it's boring because everyone's the same, and he can't individuate and he can't speak against the we, right? That's not a great world for him. And then, well, I I left the story for eight years because I had no idea how to end it. The land of me is not working because you used to be a liberal Democrat on the left when you started this book. I left, and now you're, and and now you put to the side, and now all of a sudden, you're you're a conservative minded, Republican minded, Trump supporting Jew, (laughs) right? And what happened is the ending was clear as day. I I mean, I'm going to give it away a little bit. You should still buy the book because it's phenomenal and it comes with discussion questions, activities. So he's going from the land of me. He's going from the land of we, and boom, it hit me like a lightning bolt. It's so obvious. Where does he end back? Back to his original world where he belongs, but he realizes the real name, which is the land of free, which is the best parts of me and we. And it's and it, it encapsulates what true freedom is, which comes back to the power of free choice, but also having parameters to support the others. It's a phenomenal easy to read, entertaining, fun book. It's kid approved. I have kids myself. They were my focus groups right. as, long as, as well as their friends. And it held their attention It and they, they took away something. And it's a conversation starter, starter on the value of resilience, the value of freedom of choice, and why freedom is always worth standing for. And the hardcover edition, it's a special limited edition that honors America and Israel as the beacon, beacon of lights of the world. Fabulous. I love it. I absolutely love this. So <laughs> how, how do I get a copy? Sure. How, how do I get a copy? Because I, no, I want to read this. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's available on Amazon and it's also on my website, uh, daniellabloom.com. And it really is packed with so much. There's afterwards. I've been running, I've been scrolling back and forth. Well, I'm, I'm I just now put your, put it back up at daniellabloom.com. So I got yep. that back up on the scroll. So yes. that, that's amazing. That sounds fantastic. Yeah. And if you want, one for the holidays with a personal inscription, just send me an email. It's my pleasure. So, so I want to ask you real quick, what was your lightning bolt moment? Yes. That, 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 that changed that you from being a what? Yeah. That woke me up. That woke yeah. you up. What was your, yeah. that, that, that woke you up and you know made you awake instead of woke? Yes. I get this question a lot and I'm always happy to answer it. So when I was a Democrat, I was always a pro-Israel advocate. So I was very familiar 
with the tactics to vilify Israel as the white European colonizers and take out the context, take out, you know, when you see a headline that says Palestinian killed in Tel Aviv, the reality was the Palestinian was actually a suicide bomber and he was neutralized. He was trying to kill a bunch of children and, and women and men, but it's amazing how, uh, a headline, just like we see in like the mainstream media, when you, when you leave out the context and part of the story, all of a sudden becomes a whole new narrative, right? right? So that I was familiar with as a Democrat. But when I started to see them do that to our then sitting president, President Trump, where they would take things he said completely out of context, when they started to create this narrative that anybody who was supporting Trump was a racist, white, Christian Republican, I started asking questions and then I would go to these now infamous, incredible Trump Beverly Hills rallies in 2020. And I saw what I was not seeing in the media. I saw tons of black people for Trump, Latinos for Trump, LGBT for Trump, Chinese for Trump, Jews, Iranians, Arabs. We were all united as the party of love, not the party of hate. We love our country. We love our president. We love the land of opportunity. We, we back the blue. And I realized, wow, there's something nefarious going on. And uh, and I became a free thinker ever since. And especially, you interfere with my inherent freedoms. You interfere with my children. When you, when you force a vaccine mandate on my children, when you mess with Israel, now you have me involved. And it's really the, the awakened mama bears and papa bears that are trying to get this country back on track. I love this. So, so again, even though you have proof, even though we've talked about that, there's still going to be people, people who say, but Trump's a racist, yes. but Trump's a this and Trump's that, and Trump's a sexist, homophobic, whatever. And, and they, they, they don't look and see the facts that you say you see and have seen. Do you have an ACE card that you didn't throw down to say, yeah, I see your, you know, yeah. pair of kings, but I've got four aces right here. What would that be? What would you say? Yes, I, I, I said it um, earlier. The ace card is you don't like Trump. Fine. Don't vote for him. Vote for his ticket. If you respect Elon Musk, if you respect Tulsi Gambert, a former Democrat, a woman of color, someone who served in the military, if you support RFK, who wants to make America healthy again, because we cannot ignore the chronic disease crisis. We're in California also, one out of 22 children are now on the spectrum. This is not by accident. If you care about things that affect all Americans, then make the right choice. Don't vote on brand because of emotion, because it, the words feel good. Vote for policy and really, wake up to what's at stake in other in other words see your vote as a chess move instead of a instead of the game right and see, see your see your see your vote for trump as a chess move instead of anything as a, instead of a narrative or following a narrative just i it's just so simple like stand where the light shines where so is your values stand if you stand for israel if you stand for our inherent freedoms if you stand for the health of your children, it's a no-brainer. Ignore the noise. I love I love that. Ignore the noise. All right, two more questions for you. Then we start wrapping it up. You know, one. You know, here we are. You know, a, you know, a month away from the election. Basically, what do you think that Trump can do to expand his base yes. for this next election? Yes, it's so funny that you asked me that because I was given the blessing of Laura Trump's direct cell phone. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I wanted to tell her this myself. She hasn't answered yet, but I don't blame her. She's doing a bazillion things. Uh, again, Trump has to appeal to the independent and he also has to appeal to the silent Christian. So he has to know his audience. If he's going to appeal to the independent, he has to use liberal speak. He has to talk about Kamala Harris not being able to change the Roe v. Wade, that it goes back to the states. He's not signing a national ban. Calm down. He still right. supports IVF. Like, literally, calm down. He has nothing to do with Project 2025. And again, push it to Elon. Push it to Tulsi. Talk to the independents with independent language. Look at Joe Rogan. Look at people who are now critically thinking and saying, what is going on here? Um, you have to speak their language. And then if he's speaking to a Christian crowd, he needs to emphasize 
don't applaud me. Don't just come to my rally. You right. must vote. You must vote. The stakes have never been higher. You believe in Jesus. You believe in geo-Christian values. You believe in supporting God's people. Then you must vote. And you, I think you, if you can, can be consistent on those two points, we'll be okay. You know, I've been telling people all along, I said that the best thing that we can do right now is, is have massive amounts of people show up and vote because the more people that vote, the less opportunity they will have to cheat. My last question for you, I like to ask everybody on my show, which is where do you think that we are losing freedom in America? Oh my God. Well, it's another show. Uh, right now it's with uh, freedom of speech and expression. I mean, I'm on TikTok, so you don't have to be, and it is blatant. They're not even trying to hide it. I'm seeing on a weekly basis, pro-Israel TikTok creators with huge platforms who are being unfairly striked, the double standards of what the pro pallies are allowed to get away with, um, with their vitriol towards Jews and Zionists, uh, compared to a, what a pro what what pro Israel creators say that are not offensive at all. Same with pro conservative creators, pro Christian creators. Uh, if we do not, and look what's happening with the Babylon Bee, where they're trying to put satire as a form of misinformation, we might as well be China. So I think. Um, right. Freedom of speech is the most, most important thing where the, the standards have to be balanced. That would be my number one. Love it. Absolutely love it. Daniela, you have been not only a wonderful guest, not only a source of some great information, but I think most importantly, you have been a, you have been a source for some really good thought. You're, you're very thought provoking and what I think people need to be not only more aware of, but um, you've provided tools, if you will, to be a help people think their way out of a box they might find themselves in, particularly if they're Jewish. And I, uh, and I can't thank you enough for your time on the show today. I really appreciate it. And I hope everybody goes to daniellabloom.com to find out more about you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to share these conversations with you. And again, if I haven't said it enough, we are so grateful for our allies today, allies like you and in the Christian community. Uh, you guys give us hope. So thank you for your voices and we must stand together where the light shines. Danielle, thank you so much. Hang on one second while I close out and ask everybody else to please share the show. If you found this to be informative, maybe even a little bit entertaining in some way or another, but most of all, motivational to be able to get involved in something or get out there and vote and be involved in this next election in some way, shape, or form. I'd really be grateful if you shared the show. Thank you so much. You can find my show on other platforms like YouTube and Rumble or any podcast app opposite of what you might be on right now. Thank you so much and have a great day.